Good morning. I would like to congratulate all of our parents and all of our students. And I would like to celebrate with you as you are being recognized today. I would like to bring to you an important message on how we can be resilient in the midst of adversity. Resilience in the midst of adversity. And I will be reading from the book of James, chapter 2, chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. And it says here, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete not lacking anything if there is one thing that this pandemic has ever taught us it is the fact that our lives can change in an instant the year 2019 finished with its success prosperity with its happiness and come 2020 march the world stopped how we did, we, did we respond to it? This is the first time that we ever experienced a global pandemic. We have never thought that it would happen in our lifetime. But the question is, how did we take it? How we, did we respond to it? The response to uh, the situation that 4.5 million of Filipinos lost their jobs. More than a million lost their lives. And we are not yet over this pandemic. We are in the middle of it. While there are other bad news that are happening around us. How did we take it? Did we, ha did we have fear? Anger? Confusion? The fear of uncertainty? You see, our perception of the things that happen around us will be the basis of our response or response how we will respond to it number one according to the book of James we should respond to the situations in our lives with joy joy is something that is constant unmoved by the circumstances around us on the other hand happiness is dependent on the kind of situation that we are in we feel happy when we have lots of money in the bank. We feel happy when we are healthy. But once the situations change, then our happiness goes with it. But joy is something that is different. Joy is constant, unmoved by the situations around us. Because joy is based on whom we know and how well we know him if god is at the center of our hearts then we will have joy same as love peace and joy it is all anchored on our god so as we discover the changes of our lives instantaneously our joy remains gone happiness is based on our circumstances but joy is based on our love faith number two is the object of maturity once our uh, trials are being experienced and overcome we learn the lessons thereof and we have maturity experience maturity in our faith there is a holistic goal for maturity in our lives that God wants us to experience. The book of John chapter uh, verse 3, Second John, 3 John verse 2 says that the Lord wants us to experience prosperity, good health, and spiritual maturity. There are four kinds of intelligences, four kinds of things that we have to Mature, number one, is the IQ or the intelligence quotient. 
The intelligence quotient is the measure of the total level of our comprehension. The things that we have learned, memorized, and the things that we can recall from the lessons that we have learned. Nung panahon ko, yan ang batayan ng karunungan. Pag marami kang alam, marami kang natatandaan, then you are an intelligent person. But intelligence is more than just knowing facts. We have to be intelligent. And the second uh, intelligence is EQ or the emotional quotient. Emotional quotient is the measure of our ability to maintain peace with other people. The relationship that we have, a peaceful relationship, is what a mature person has. It is also our basis on how we discipline ourselves with time. Time is the equalizer. We are all given 24 hours. And if one person can be productive with this 24 hours, then there is no excuse for us not to be productive. Time is also the highest expression of faith, of respect, rather. We, the more that we respect a person, the more that we give that respect through time. So we are paid according, not to our time, but according to our productivity on such a time that is given. So when we are emotionally mature, we experience a discipline in time. Being responsibility, being responsible, being honest, having a clear boundary of respect, being humble, being genuine, and being considerate. They are all expressions of emotional maturity. Number three is the social quotient, the SQ. You see, we have to grow, we have to mature, because this is the measure of the ability to build a network of friends and to keep that relationship for a long period of time. And that is the reason kung bakit merong mga tao na kahit na grade school pa lang magkakaklase na hanggang sa mag-asawa at magkaroon ng sariling pamilya, magkakaibigan. Why? Because they have strong SQ. They have relationship that lasts. If our children will be matured in their SQ, they will never result to separation when they get married. They will live through every challenges and every problems that they will encounter in their family life. But there is also one uh, thing that we have to mature from. And it is called the adversity caution or the AQ. The measure of our ability to go through, to go through the rough patches in our lives and to come out of it with a fullness or sanity. You see, we have to experience the total maturity that God wants you to have. And it all comes with our personal relationship with God. We change. We mature. We grow. And that is because Jesus is at the center of our lives. Number three, the the writer of the book of James says that we have to persevere and we have to experience a complete life. A life that is not lacking in anything. You see, perseverance is a continuous work. It is a work in progress. You, we are a work in progress. And we don't have to feel sorry about ourselves once we fail. Failure is not a person. Failure is an event. And once we learn the lessons of failure, we have to stand up, to move on, and to grow. There is one author that I really admire, and he is the author of the book, The Greatest Salesman in the World. And he says in the fourth uh, scroll of his book, Ogmandino said, that I will persist until I succeed. I am not delivered into this world in defeat, nor have I failure course in my veins. I am not a sheep waiting to be prodded by my shepherd. I am a lion, and I refuse to talk, to walk, 
and to sleep with the sheep. I will hear not those who weep and complain, for their diseases are contagious. Let them join the sheep. The slaughterhouse of failure is not my destiny. Persevere. Raise your goal so high that it will be impossible for you to reach it unless God raises you. And lastly, we have to grow into the completion of God's purpose for our lives, and that is Christ likeness. To be complete, to be happy, to be satisfied. It all relies on the goal that we will set before us, and that is to be like Christ. The highest goal of life is to know God, to understand His purpose and fulfill it. And in the book of the Purpose Driven Life, the author said that unless we find, discover, and fulfill God's purpose for us, we are not really living. We are just existing. The highest goal of the Christian life is to be like Christ. I would like to congratulate everybody. You parents, congratulations. Your children have a lot more uh, to go through. And we are here praying for you. To all of our uh, students who are being recognized for all the excellent work that you have done, congratulations. To God be the one. God bless you. Keep on. May God give you the wisdom to discern the right from the wrong and the courage to choose what is right. I will not to pray for you. Father God, I pray for our students and as they receive these recognitions that they have fulfilled and they have reached out to receive the glory. It is all because of you and it is all for you. Our children, Lord, we as parents have high hopes and dreams for them. Fulfill it as we establish them, Lord, in the fear of you. Bless our lives, our family, and our future. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a good day.